Hey guys, what's going on? So in today's video, I want to walk you through an easy sales outline that I followed for however long I sold insurance and I still continue to use this in my sales process and I implement it in my agent sales processes and they see immaculate results. So who this video is for is if you don't know when to transition into the sale or when to transition out of problem and fact finding. So if you're struggling to know when to go to the next part of the sale, stay tuned and watch the end of the video. And I'd love to know just in the comments what you guys would like to see more content on. Like instead of you sending me emails, just drop a comment. It's so much easier. It helps me out more and I can go all to one place to get the responses and feedback from you guys. So first off, thanks for all the continued love and support. Uh, I've been getting like 75 emails a day and that's uh, it's mind boggling sometimes, but it's still pretty cool. So I know I'm adding value to you guys' lives and it's helping you make some money. So that's awesome. So I like to follow Alex Hormozzi's closer framework when I'm going into a sale and I just find that it is so simple that it just works. Like people try to add all this complexity to shit that it doesn't need to be. Like you don't have to look for the most psychological thing to do. Like you just one or two simple things and I promise you it's scalable and it works because it's so easy and you'll be able to do it for such a long period of time that you'll probably actually over execute on it and get better results than you think anyways. So let's go right into that. So the first part is like clarify why they are on the call and you do that like, hey, what are you looking for on here? Like, why did you take the time out of your busy schedule to meet with me, an insurance agent, who I'm sure you have already heard plenty of terrible, don't really say that, but you get what I'm saying. Like, find out why they took the time out of their schedule to book a call with you. Hey, what are you dealing with? What's the problem we're trying to solve? Like, why did you fill out a request for mortgage protection? What did you want? want out of this final expense request that you sent in to us? What were you looking for it to do for you? Once they tell you that, then we're going to move them to the next part. So we have to label them with a problem. So based on our listening skills and our interpretation and understanding of what they just gave us, we can refeed that back to them with a restatement saying, so what you're telling me is that you wanted to get a policy to pay the house off or you wanted to get this policy to pay all of your funeral expenses that way your family wasn't homeless after the fact and this is going to come from the quality of questions you're going to ask in the very first part like don't just take surface level answers if you ask dumb answer if you ask dumb questions you get stupid answers does that make sense so hey why did you want insurance that is a weak ass question. If I hear you asking that, I'm probably gonna slap you. Not really, but thought it'd be funny to say. So, hey, what did you want this final expense coverage to do for you? Like, why did you take the time out of your day to fill it out by hand, mail it back into people you didn't know with your height and weight and all this personal information? What did you really want it to do for you? Who were you looking to protect? What was the main concern? I like to ask a series of questions all at once. Once I get an answer, well, I wanted to protect my family. God forbid something happened. If you get something like that, awesome. We can move forward a little bit more, but if they give you some, well, I just wanted quotes. Okay, well, why did you want quotes? To make sure it was affordable to protect your family? You see how I answered their question with another question and took back control. But now I'm getting to the root cause of the problem. Yeah, I wanted to make sure it was affordable to protect my family. Well, awesome. That's exactly what I'm here to help do for you is make sure this is affordable that way, whenever you need it, it's there and you won't have to worry about when a car tire pops, canceling the policy to afford a new tire on your car. Fair enough. Move to the next part. So who were you trying to protect with this? Oh, my wife and kids. Well, okay. Bob, could you tell me what it would look like for your wife and kids if God forbid you didn't make it home yesterday? What does life look like for them right now? Like what do they have to do today to make ends meet? How long could they afford to stay in the house? Well, they'd figure it out. Okay, well, how? Make them give you real shit, okay? This is gonna help you out a lot, understand. And when you understand a clear problem, it's so much easier to solve, I promise you. Well, they'd probably stay in the house for 45 days. Oh, okay, so now we're getting somewhere. And how would that make you feel knowing your family can only stay there for 45 days? Uh, probably not the best. Now we're touching some pain. 
Fair enough? If you're liking this, just go ahead and click the like button and drop a comment about if you've gotten anything out of this so far. So after that, dive more into the problem. It's called peeling an onion back. And if you're not going at least three layers deep, like why, why, why? Like you're shooting yourself in the foot. You're never gonna get a real response from the people. Okay, so now we go into the labeling them. So what you're telling me is if you didn't have this policy and you died today, your family could only afford to stay in the house for 45 days. Is that correct? Yep, awesome, I see why you booked a meeting with me. Or I see, like, I see why you showed up to the call. Now we're linking a need between the product solving their problem. And I even la like to slap in labels right here. Like Bob, you're probably a person who really values their family, aren't you? He's like, yeah, and now he's gonna embrace that label by buying the product. By buying the product, he is validating that he is a family man and that he values family. It's all psychological, and we take on these labels all the time, so we might as well give them something positive for them to look forward to. It's gonna help them see more of the need in the product and the value. It's gonna increase it tremendously. So after we labeled them with a problem, okay, well, Bob, what have you done in the past to get over this? Have you met with any other insurance agents? Do you have any existing life insurance? If they do, awesome, they're buyers. Don't get scared off by that. Well, Bob, we're actually gonna do a policy review because nine times out of 10, people don't even know what they have. So I just wanna make sure I'm doing the best because today, spending more money might not be the answer. If I could save you money or find you a better policy, like go down that rabbit hole. Or their policy might not even be active or the agent put down that they were a non-smoker when they're a tobacco user, and that policy's just void. Like they lied on an insurance application and policy's more than likely not even gonna pay out from the insurance carrier. So being able to point that stuff out, because look, nine times out of 10, those insurance agents are worried about one thing, getting that fucking commission deposit. They don't care about the family. It is what it is. This industry is cutthroat and people You'd be amazed at what insurance agents do out there, especially with IULs. And if you're watching this and you're the one driving up fucking target premiums, I'm coming for you. So next, after we've seen what they have done to get past the problem, like how long have you been struggling with this? What have you done to get over it? After we get those answers and we have a clear picture of what they've tried to do, now we can show them why they were only one step away. Like you were so close to finding the right solution, now we're bringing in us. Now we're gonna sell the vacation, not the plane flight. Here's what you missed. If you would have had this one thing, here's why it would have worked. Now we're gonna sell the vacation and I only like to do three things. So if I'm selling mortgage protection, I'm saying, so with this policy, you're gonna get an agent for life, just meaning you're not gonna to have to do anything, like your family's not gonna to have to worry about anything or worrying about the money, God forbid, when something does happen to you, I'm just gonna show up to the door and deliver a check to your family and make sure everything's taken care of. Two, this policy is never gonna cost you more than it is today, and it's never gonna decrease in the value that it's gonna pay out to your family. And lastly, God forbid when you do die, your whole mortgage is gonna be taken care of. Would those three things be valuable to you? Or do you see any value in that? Does that sound fair? We should get a yes from that. If not, we're also probably gonna get questions. So now we have to explain away their concerns, deal with their objections. And there's really only like three, sometimes four that I've seen. So you got price, which is just an absence of value. Then you have stalls, like I need to think about it. They don't wanna confront a decision or they're scared of making the wrong one. And then we have the decision maker. Oh, I have to talk to my wife about it. They're asking for permission when they should be asking for support and we just have to push them over the edge. And then sometimes people do have timing as in, or as a real issue, like paychecks not there yet, or I just switched jobs and I don't wanna to commit to this. Like sometimes timing really is an issue or so-and-so just died yesterday. Okay, probably not the best, or probably is the best time. But with price, like, hey, where are you at on a one out of 10 scale on wanting this? A seven, okay, what would it take to get you to a 10? They'll tell you how they wanna be sold. Or do you see any value in this? So next is stalls, I need to think about it. Okay, well you need two days or two months to make a decision. 
and it's going to startle them. They're like, that's right. It doesn't take time to make a decision. It takes information. So what do you need to know more on? Did I not explain everything clearly? Three, I need to talk to my wife about it. I need to talk to my kids about it. Okay, well, do your kids, does your wife know you guys have this problem? And they should be on the appointment anyways. If not, here's how to get over the objection. I always like to have all the decision makers on the call. So does your wife know you guys have this problem? That when you die, she only has 45 days to stay in the house and then she'll be homeless. And then the kids have to move school districts and no more chicken nuggets on Wednesdays. Don't really say that, but he's gonna say, yeah, she knows we have this problem. And do you think Sandra is okay with you guys having this problem, especially her, because she's the one that's gonna have to deal with it. Well, no. Awesome, so why would Sandra be against you solving a problem that she's already not okay with? Moving to the close. Or next, just ask them, because if they're not there, they're gonna give you a fictitious or arbitrary answer that they made up. So, well, what would happen if Sandra said no? Well, I would do it anyways. Awesome, let's get you signed up. Well, if Sandra said no, then I wouldn't do it. Well, what do you think her biggest objection would be? Well, the price. Now we know his real issue because Sandra's not even there and that's not a real objection. He's just making something up. So as long as we can fix that, make it real, then we can go into the clothes. After that, I like to go into the R, so reinforce their buying decision because after that sale is made, you have 48 hours to get them to a point of deciding whether or not they will ever buy from you again. This is just based on statistics and numbers that I've seen across multiple agencies and multiple sales. So I like to send out thank you cards. I always get the policy mailed to me. I'll do a whole nother video on that for you guys. So uh, drop a comment if you guys want to know what that's all about, because I can guarantee you I'll increase your persistency 20%. Meaning if you have like only 60% of your business getting placed, I'll bump it up to 80 for you with just a simple trick. So if you'd like that, drop a comment below or a like, subscribe to the channel, it helps me out a ton, or send this to a friend, whatever. But just let me know when you did it, and I'll make that video for you guys. And then you can also just make them, like, can you just do two promises for me? Like, one, I made all these promises to you today about what this coverage is gonna do for you. Can you just make two for me? First one, if this ever becomes unaffordable, six, seven years down the line, you'll agree to give me a call. But we agree right now that this fits in your budget today. Yep, awesome, and we're assuming if they're gonna keep it for longer than a year and we're out of chargeback period. You're welcome. Second promise, Bob and Sandra, there are like tens of thousands of insurance agents out there, but I am the best one for you guys' family, as I've already said. So if another agent calls you about this policy, take their quote, be nice to them, and say that you have to get back with your other agent first. What I want you to do is give me that quote, and I'll be honest with you and tell you if it's something better. If it is, I'll even help you enroll in it. I'll e hell, I'll even help you fill out the paperwork for it. Fair enough? And if it's not better, I'll get on a three-way call with you and that agent and explain to them why it's not better. Does that sound fair? Awesome. Well, thank you guys for taking the time to meet with me today. Now you can go into retirement questions, whatever follow-up shit you want to use. But hope this gives you guys a clear transition on how to follow through with the sale for a life insurance appointment. So if you found this valuable, send it to another life insurance agent that you're working with or that you really care about and you wanna see them succeed as well as yourself. That way we start reducing the amount of broke insurance agents out there. So other than that, you guys keep being awesome. I love you guys. I'll see you running buddies on the next video. Until then, bye.